Welcome back to the lab, folks. So today we're going to wind up our series on the power supply here. This supposedly started out as a 30 volt, 3 amp power supply, but as we've morphed it into a 20 volt, 2.5 amp power supply in order to get it working properly. And if you've seen the other videos, you'll understand all my logic behind that. And what did we, we made some changes, very small changes in the meantime. Um, so I put on a, an extra capacitor here. So we've got a total of 9,900 and I'm using the nice Nishikon capacitors for this. I just need to put a little bit of hot glue on them to, to stabilize them. They probably don't need it because that uh, sponge tape is pretty good at doing that. But I'm going to put some hot snot on there. Got to have your hot snot. Okay. And uh, I decided that, you know what, uh, I'm going to put, uh, I have 741s in here, as you know. And I had a 741 in here as well, but I decided to go to a, a TL081 in here just because it has a, a slightly better voltage swing. So that's also going to help along with the extra capacitance with any remaining ripple that we have. And uh, that, that, well, that's it. I've got, I selected all my hardware. I think I have everything I need. I've got a decision here to make, but I think I've figured it out. Now it's going to go with, um, you know, just three cheap, banana sockets like that one there for the ground. Here's the, the positive and the negative one here. Uh, but I figured, you know, I've got these really, really nice name brand ones. I got, I've got a few of them. These are Pomona, I believe, and they're really nice to gold plated and everything. But I've decided what I'm going to do with this power supply is I'm going to put it up in my office lab along with uh, another power supply that's up there. These ones are going to have plugs going into them all the time and they do have they do have holes in them for putting wires in so that's a positive there as well and oh yeah and i got these panels made up they're really nice and i gave it a name ps 2025d ps is power supply 20 means that it's 20 volt 20, 25 means 2.5 amp and d means it's got digital display and of course i've got the uh, fine and coarse controls uh, for voltage and amps and yeah that's it so the, the first thing I got to do though is because the, the layout in here is going to be kind of critical and we got uh, very little space but we have enough space so what I got to do is I've got to assemble the panels and before I wire them up I'm going to come back and, and kind of slide them into place to put the transformer and the circuit board need to go into just the right spot so that they avoid hitting everything so I'm going to get on that assembling these and uh, I guess I can do that in in fast time here but I'm going to have to drill some holes these here take a, a 12 millimeter hole for the uh, standoffs on them and this takes the well takes the 8 millimeter hole that it's supposed to take and make sure that these are right yeah 6 millimeter holes for these and uh, oh yeah the fan came in so there's the fan I'm going to be using and it's going to mount in like that and then this has to mount over that like that the big heat sink and make sure I got the right size for the fuse holder yeah that's fine Okay, so I'm going to drill this hole out and drill these two holes out. Um, I'm going to come right back and uh, then we'll find the locations of these components down here, drill those holes, mount all this stuff up, wire up the panels and put these in place and then wire everything else up. And that should, uh, that should finish this project. Okay, that's the front panel done. Looks pretty good. Yeah, we'll just get started on the rear panel.
All right, this is what we ended up with. Now it looks like I'm gonna to have to reverse that connector around. I'm not gonna have enough room here to, to bring the output out. So I'm gonna reverse this uh, terminal block around so I can bring the output wires in like this. There's a, we have enough room here for the 24 volts coming in. We have plenty of clearance. It looks like it's about a centimeter between the board and the terminals. So what I might do, um, might bring the, actually bring the power in this way, or I can bring it around this way, bring the ground down to there, and then pick up a pigtail out here to put the ground onto the front panel. And other than that, everything looks okay. We got clearance for our capacitors. Yeah, it's, uh, it's going to be a tight fit. Alrighty. Wire up the transformer first. I'll take this off, reverse this connector, wire up the transformer, then I'll wire up the back panel. Yeah, and then I'll do the front panel. Then we'll connect it all up and test it out. All right, folks, we've got all the, the wiring of the panels and the chassis and all that is all done. Now we've just got to assemble everything. I hope I've left uh, enough length on everything to get everything in place. I guess the first thing to do would be kind of like bolt down that board here, put it in place, and then try to get the, the different sections all wired up. I think I'll start with the back and then do the front. I got a little scratch on it there, I guess, during the process somewhere, but that's okay. We live with it. All right, so that was, uh, that was a bit of a chore. I might tidy these up a little bit later with, uh, put some tie wraps on them. But I think I have everything, I think I have everything right. Now is the big reveal, I guess. Okay, so I've got it ready to go here. I'm just gonna put up on this piece of wood here. Allow the power cord not to get crunched and turn everything down to zero. Turn the power on. Okay, I can live with that. Okay, so voltage. Maximum voltage is 20.1. We were aiming for 20. Goes up one volt, down 0.7. So it gives us about 10% change for the fine yeah very nice the fans making some noise one thing I would do uh, differently if I did it again is put in a temperature controlled fan I think that would be a good idea so let's get some uh, let's get some instrumentation on here and uh, some some load and uh, see how it does okay we got uh, 10 ohm load here hope you can see that meter okay I'm going to short out the uh, power supply. I'm going to set the current to one amp. And then we'll plug in the load and bring up the voltage. Now you can see the current here and the current there, and they match. And we should, when we get to 10 volts, we should have an amp and we should start the current limit. Yep. Perfect. And uh, 1.01 amps is 1.006. So you run that off, it's 1.01 amps. So that's accurate. And the voltage is, uh, I can assume the voltage is accurate. We'll check that in a minute. I just wanna make sure the current was working. We've got fine control here. Yes, we do. Fine control is working fine. That's good. And of course, of course, it's working well. So let's see if we can, we get two amps out of it. 
at 19 volts, 20 volts, 1.98 amps. Let's see, how is the how is the transistor doing back here? No noticeable temperature increase here at all. So what we could do here is try to get a couple amps into the 2 ohm load. That should dissipate quite a bit across the transistor. Yeah, let's turn this off for a second. Reconfigure things here. And that resistor's getting hot. All right. Now we probably want to bring that voltage down a little bit. We'll turn it back on. See what we got. We got that up at the maximum. Let's see if we can get two and a half amps out of it and see what it does. Okay, so at maximum here, it's um, going to limit at about 2.6 amps. Yeah, 2.7 amps. And yeah, you got 2.67 there, 2.68 here. And give it a minute or two and see what our transistor is doing. Oh, it's fine. Yeah, it's warm, but it's uh, at the temperature of lukewarm water. I'd say maybe 40, 45 degrees C. So it'd be nice to put a temperature sensor on that fan to come around about 40 degrees C. And maybe even more than just the temperature sensor, you'd have the temperature sensor going into a little microcontroller and do some pulse width modulation on the output to speed it up when necessary. And now we got, of course, we've got to check it uh, to see what kind of ripple we're getting on it and to see if that voltage is accurate. So let me turn it off. I'll set up to do the voltage first and then we'll have a look at the ripple. Okay, meter set on DC volts. So uh, let's turn up the current a little bit here so we can get some output. We'll turn it on. And we got everything turned down. We got 0 0.01 volts is the minimum. And uh, let's turn up this. So we got 3.99 volts here, we got 4.01. So the voltage is accurate. Turn it up all the way, see if our 20 volts really is 20 volts. And it is. Here we are. I've got the big loads set up to over there for two and a half amps. I'm gonna hook up the oscilloscope directly here with this little this little connector thing here it goes to PNC. So we're getting about 50 millivolts of background noise in this lab it's usually at least that so let's let's turn the power on i think we've got the voltage in the middle here um we've got the current limiting is off or up to maximum so we should see around about i don't know eight or nine volts at two and a half amps and there we go so 2.4 amps we got uh still 50 millivolts that hasn't produced any uh, appreciable ripple or noise Let's uh, crank this up all the way. Two and a half amps, 2.1 amps, 20 volts. And we're at 50, we just got a tiny bit more, about 52, 53 millivolts. Uh, total noise and ripple. I'd say that's a win. So that that's pretty good. So other than that, how are things going here? Yeah lukewarm no massive heat going on there how about the transformer is the transformer getting hot of course not no it's fine this transistor nah all right all right well that that wraps it up i guess we've got uh, a useful little power supply i mean this should this should do a fine job uh, it's a little bit noisy you know i will use this in my uh, upstairs lab my office lab and I'll use it as a second power supply. Yeah, the power supply that's up there doesn't have a fan in it at all. Of course, it's only a 15 volts and, and two amps. So it's only a 30 watt, this is a 50 watt. So there may be times when I want the extra power for this, but it's gonna provide a good, it's, it's not gonna blow up like it would have before with the 44 volts or something like that going into the operation amplifiers. Overloading the output transistor. This, this, none of this will happen in this one. We've got plenty of cooling here. We got a good heat sink on it. We got fan. We got a, operational amplifiers running in their happy zone. And uh, you know, under normal conditions, it's it's a pretty good supply. That's it. So we'll come back uh, with the next video. We'll have something new for you. And uh, let let me know down in the the comments what you think. I mean, is is there 
anything that could be done for this uh, look at the circuit diagram see if you can think of anything all right if you like the video you got anything out of the series uh, give me a thumbs up uh, subscribe if you haven't subscribed already that'd be really handy and uh, thank you very much for coming out we'll see you in the next video bye bye